Okay, here's an example of one of the cogs that I had running and this one basically runs so I took it apart I'm going to clean it and replate it uh, so this is the top for the carburetor and so what I did was um, I hit it with some aircraft stripper and just rinse it off in a degreaser and you could see it leaves a little bit of schmutz um, the next step would be to tear it down completely um, you know remove all the steel parts and then soak it in some acid but I think what I might do is just give it shoot it in the acid real quick I have some aluminum prep and just stick it in there for a little bit and then take it out and see what it looks like just as a test uh, and then over there I have the, the body of the carburetor which needs to come apart and I can do the same process uh, as this one so that's what I'm going to do next and let's see what happens with this next test here uh, the concept is to get this as clean as possible eventually I'm going to put it in the blaster with the beads glass beads and it's got to be super clean all t stripped down and uh, re-acid etched and then it's going to get plated so we're coming back to it and we'll see what happens okay let's take a look at we're soaking the carb parts so this is the body this is in paint remover and I'm going to let that soak for I don't know however long I feel like and that's doing pretty good it's completely coated wear goggles and this is a light acid bath solution and I'm going to have to show you what this is you get this at the welding store Lumibrite and this is the uh, the top of the carb I let it soak for a little while and you can see it's it's definitely it's getting it's getting pretty clean so I'm gonna put that back in there this is a pretty mild solution but it is a lumen bright solution so it will even clean the steel a little bit more it'll etch it so I'm gonna put it back in there and just let it roll around what's nice is this really gets in all the passages so I'm just gonna do one quick pass because I'm gonna come back to that part in a little bit see it's bubbling I'm gonna come back to that part after I sandblast it with the glass beads and we're going to re-immerse it so we'll come back to that and it has to be disassembled before I sandblast it so we'll get back to that in a little bit right. let's take a look at the body now this came out of the acid wash and this is a, a fairly long pass you can see that those brass pieces there that came out pretty damn clean so this is before really before I'm going to sandblast it and I think what I'm going to do is when I go to sandblast it, I'm actually going to remove these uh, I have more so I need to make a modification to this carburetor body anyway I need to deal with the idle circuit which I'll show you later on um, but this is what the body looks like and it's not bad considering it's clean and you if you wanted to you could spray this with a little clear or whatever um, you could even aladine it but this is not bad so you could just about run this if you wanted to but we're going to plate it and I want to show you over here we, this uh, the epoxy came off uh, that's because it was using the wrong epoxy I'm going to use a uh, JB weld but I'm going to use the version and I already tried I'm going to use the version that is for marine you could use marine text too if you want but I've tried out the version on the other carburetor that is for marine and uh, gasoline and what have you so let's see what we got and I'm gonna uh, sandblast this and clean, re-clean it and it, it's gonna get plated so we're gonna do that very shortly and I'll be back alright we're back and this is another take I re-sandblasted these two pieces you can see just how white they are I mean they're just absolutely beautiful this is glass beading so you want to be careful it, you might want to go with walnuts or something like that these are glass beads this is fine what's nice about it is they're a little large the beads in a sense that so they do have a harder time getting into small passages so this is what they look like uh, so I'm just doing these two for now and I'm going to now sit, put these in a bath of a mild degreaser just to get off any grease that may be on them and also blow them again make sure there's no sand or anything junk in it so it's another opportunity to clean then it's going to go into a luma prep and a little bit of uh, hydrochloric acid or in, mixed in muriatic acid actually mixed in a little bit of water and then into the into the those are going to pets going to pickle it clean them up and pick a little bit more and then right into the plating bath so that's coming up next and stand by I'm just going to take one more look just to show you how white it gets these are not quite dry this is this is just sandblasted and then rinsed once in a in a degreaser that I made up 
which is kind of like a base sodium product, uh, but it's a, a mild solution. Um, really just to get any, it's not to, it's just to degrease the part in terms of getting any fingerprints or anything like that off. It's not to like clean the part um, completely. So let's, let me go to the next step, which is I'm going to set it up for uh, being in the bucket and I'm going to put it into uh, the etching solution, which is a pickling solution. First step is uh, a little bit of Lumabrite and then it's going to go into a little bit of muriatic acid dip and then into the the actual um, uh, into the uh, plating plating bath. So let me get to that. We'll be, be back in a minute. All right, let's see how it comes out. If I could just get past here. All right, so we're going to shut this down. Let's take a look. Let's see what what we have to work with. This is both sides. Zinc plated. It's about 20 minutes to a half an hour aside, roughly. And I'm just going to take a look here. It looks pretty good. I don't know if it needs any more on the other side. Might might want to give it a little bit more time on this side, which is definitely doable really looks good. Very happy with it. It definitely has zinc on it, for sure. And I think I'm going to give it just a little bit of time. And on the other side. Yeah, it's, it's definitely zinc. Just because I want that plating on the body a little bit stronger. It doesn't need to be much stronger, but it's going to be a little bit. And then we're going to take it out. It. it does a nice job, and what's nice about it is, is you really have good protection here. That looks good. Let's put it back in the bath. Put the bubbler. Back in the bath it goes. like it's starting up. Oh, there it goes. So I'll turn the bubble back on. I'm going to set my clock for five minutes and that's it for this side. And we're looking good. All right, we'll see what happens in a minute. Okay, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to grab this shot, but I'm ready for the zinc chromate or the crossover, the version coating. So I'm going to displog Not too bad. It didn't burn anything. It didn't burn. The, it doesn't look like it burned the uh, zinc plating at all. Not at all. So we want to get all of this out, and then do, I want it dark. I want. I want a lot on here. I want to make sure that this is going to stay for quite some time. But the zinc really absorbs it. And it's just absolutely wonderful. We're going to really cook this good. Now, you could put as much on as you want. Some good, good results. The trick is to keep it moving. Nice. I'm going to give you guys a preliminary look. I'm going to put it on like a tray of some kind. Oh, I put it on. Oh, 
I have something, but I need to take my gloves off. Okay, here it is. Well, I think I put a little too much on, but that's okay. That's okay. Try to do this with the carburetor at the same time. That's fine. We'll let that dry. I understand that it changes color slightly after it dries, and you can see it is getting browner, but that's fine. Once it's all in the carburetor, it won't really matter. Um, excuse me, once the cover is in the car, uh, it won't really matter. I'll let that air dry like that. Um, I know that if you buff up the zinc first, it comes to a slightly different color. I think I would have used a little bit less of the dye. So, I don't want to be pulling all over this. I'm just going to screw it up. Well, it takes like four hours and then you can touch it. But I suppose if you leave it for a day, you're probably good to go and you can put it together in a rebuild. But I'm pretty happy with the results considering it's got tin on it and this coating. And this will not come off once it's dry on there. It will oxidize over time. It could last many years. So this is what is oxidizing and not the metal of the carburetors. A lot of times what you see inside these carburetors is the metal just comes apart, um, especially as it gets older. So, all right, we'll see what happens as it dries. All right, let's uh, let's get back to the car build here. So I want to just take a look at, these are the shafts that I pulled out. And you can see they're pretty rusty, and I want to show them to you. By the way, I ground the end of this. You can see that. And I tapped it. I want to make, this is the end with the throttle. Uh, the throttle shaft, the front throttle shaft, where the sort of butterfly wing thing is. I don't even know what you call it. It's like, I call it the handle, the part where you grab and you give it a twist and you go vroom vroom. What a jerk. Anyway, so this is what they look like right now. Well, by the way, the idea of that is, is so that I can interchange the various uh, brackets that the accelerator pedal and the uh, springs go to. Because on my car, I may want a particular bracket, and I may have two carburetors, and I may, it may just be easier for me to just swap them out. So I think I'm going to do this on all my builds, really. Uh, also, when you take this apart, you really it's the only way to get them apart. You have to grind off the end. Um, it's got pe it's peened over on it, and I'll show you that later. But I just wanted to go through. This is what we've got here. So I'm going to clean these up. I'm going to blast them. Now, if you have a tumbler, even better. I don't. So I'm going to have to struggle getting these in the blaster. And then and later on you'll see I'll acid etch them and they'll kind of come really, really clean and then we're going to plate them. One of the nice things about it is this kind of plating process is that these won't rust again and you could add a little bit material, more material on it and it'll tighten up the throttle shafts a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. So we're going to get to that. I'm going to plate the sandblast this and we're going to do some plating in a little while. All right, we'll be back. Okay, here are the pieces for the throttle plate. Um, so this is just out of the sandblaster. Uh, not bad. This is glass bead. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang these and I'm going to go through the dip process. Now once I start the dip, this is going to be a little degreaser. They're already all degrees, but it's just another step to clean it. And once I go through that, I have to go right through it and get it right in the tank because this steel will rust through the degreaser and the acid bath. And we don't want that to happen. Uh, so I have to go right through the process and get it right in the bath and then it'll come out zinc plated when it's all done So I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to go through that process and set it up and you'll see what it looks like when it comes out Okay, everything's out of the plating <coughs> Excuse me an iridite bath. So let's just take a look at some of these things here like the shaft These are the shafts and you can see the colors I don't know if you can see this. I hope so Put some more light on it. But you can see this is the two plating process with the conversion coating on top. It is really, really very nice. Now, this is not going to come off for a long time. Really came out nice. So I'm going to start putting this stuff back together again, and I'm going to take it slow because I have a lot of stuff to do. But this is uh, pretty nice. I mean, no more rust. It's been plated. It's not going to rot and it's going to operate really nice. So I've got a really, really clean bunch of parts here and they're basically like new at this point. But not bad. All right, we'll be back in a little bit. And don't forget to uh, comment and subscribe and like, hit the like button. And enjoy. I'll see you later. Okay, this is what it looks like. Beep.
clean that is before I put the JB weld on. I'm going to put the JB weld on now.